Hi, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is fairly basic, but there are three separate rhythm strips here, so we have a little bit more information than just a plain rhythm strip. Remember, always look at the whole entire strip to see if it's regular or not, and it does appear to be irregular. You've got some longer intervals here and some shorter intervals here and here, so let's try to make some sense out of this. And if you just look across at the rhythm strip, you can actually see what looks like a fairly normal beat right here because it has a P wave and a QRS and a T wave, and it seems to be followed by a similar PQRS T. So it looks like you have two kind of normal beats in a row. But let's take a closer look at those beats and check the intervals. First of all, we can get a sense of what the underlying heart rate is. We can count off boxes from this QRS, 300, 150, 175, 60, 50. So it's just about 50 beats per minute. We can also see that the PR interval is a little bit long. It starts about one small box to the left over here and ends about one and a half small boxes on this side. Now you can eyeball it or you can use a pair of calipers if you need to. You can take these calipers down here, place it at the beginning of the P wave and then resize it to the beginning of the QRS complex. Then we can pick it up and place one point on a heavy line and here so we can read off one big box is 200 and three small ones 120. So the PR interval is 320 milliseconds pretty long, and this one looks about the same. The QRS is narrow, it's about 80 milliseconds wide, and the QT interval seems to be normal as well. It's about 400 milliseconds or so. So let's see what happens after that. We have a pause here. During the pause, there do not appear to be any P waves except Right in front of this QRS complex, there seems to be a P wave, but this PR interval couldn't possibly have conducted. See how short that is? So what does that tell you? It tells you that this QRS complex could not have arisen from that P wave because there wasn't enough time for it to get down the AV node. So this QRS came from someplace else. This is a typical example of a junctional escape beat. It's junctional because it looks just like the underlying QRS complex. So it must have taken a normal route down the conduction system, but it arises because of this very long pause. And what's happened is the overdrive suppression that normally keeps the AV node from firing was removed and so the AV node fired. And it just so happened to fire at the same time that a P wave was coming down. So you have this sinus P wave, like literally right in front of a junctional escape. And then you have a sinus beat here. And then what's this beat here? This beat seems to occur early. It's a premature beat. I mean, it's coupled at about 75 beats per minute and there doesn't seem to be a P wave in front of it. So a lot of people will say, oh, wow, we've got junctional escape beats. Maybe this is a junctional premature beat, huh? What do you think? Could it be? Because it certainly kind of looks like there's no P wave. Well, here's where looking at different leads becomes extremely helpful. And if you're stuck with a single lead monitor where you're only monitoring one single ECG lead, you're gonna be at a distinct disadvantage. Because if we look up here, look at that. There's a P wave in this lead that we don't see in either of the other two leads. But it's clearly there, and it's clearly conducting at about the same PR interval of maybe 300 milliseconds or so. But it's way, way early, isn't it, when you compare this coupling interval or this atrial rate compared with the underlying atrial rate of about 50 beats per minute. So this is a PAC. It's a premature atrial contraction that conducts with a first degree, but that explains why this beat comes early. And then it's followed by a usual sinus beat right here. Well, let's turn our attention to the beginning of this strip. And right here, we see another short interval. And sure enough, when we look in V1, we can see a PAC right there as well. Okay, so now we sort of come full circle and we can classify most of these beats as being either sinus bradycardia or PACs, except for one thing. We haven't yet determined why there was this pause here. Why did this P wave and junctional beat occur? You have to ask yourself, what caused the pause? Was this just a sinus pause or was there something else going on? 
Well, here's where you have to really pay attention to the very subtle details. You really have to try to figure out if there's a P wave in here someplace that maybe you missed. And it's like the old game, where is Waldo? And here's where it's really, really important to look carefully at the ST segment and the T wave of the previous beat and compare it with the beat that you're interested in. And if you look very carefully, you can see that there is a difference that right here at the tail end of this T wave, there's a bump. You see that? Compared with this T wave that's very, very smooth, all the other T waves are very, very smooth at the end and come right back to the baseline. But this one has a PAC. It's a very high frequency jiggle, but it occurs so much earlier than all the other PACs that the AV node is refractory. And so it's blocked in the AV node. So it's a non-conducted PAC. And that kind of resets the sinus node. So now if you measure the time from this PAC, we have 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So this P wave more or less comes on time at 50 beats per minute after this PAC occurred. So the PAC resets the sinus node and then the sinus node fires again at 50 beats per minute. But because the AV node hadn't seen any beating, it fires and gives you a junctional escape beat that occurs simultaneously with the P wave. Okay, so you can see that if you analyze these strips step by step, you can figure out what's happening. Be very diligent about looking for P waves and trying to figure out what's happening where. You'll be able to analyze difficult strips like this without a problem. So until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.